Good evening. I am Latasha Thomas, your worth coach and restoration strategist. I help women explore and understand their worth and ultimately walk in victory. Tonight, we're going to talk about the topic of what's baking. Every one of us has a gift that is being prepared inside of us for the ultimate display. Take a listen. I hope that you'd be willing to join me all the way in the chat tonight so that we can have a conversation about what's baking. So each of us has a something that is inside of us um, that we are preparing, that we are um, nurturing, that's growing so that we can ultimately um, have our amazing display. And so what am I talking about? I'm talking about purpose. I'm talking about gifts that are inside of each and every one of us. And I just want to put a little spin on it and say what's baking tonight. So I hope that you would join me all the way in the chat. Give me a hello, a hey girl, hey, or something so that I know that you're here with me tonight. And um, so we're going to go ahead and explore a little bit. So um, this weekend, I had a really great experience. I had a great experience with my children. And sometimes we'll do some cooking in the kitchen. We'll do some different things to have family time. Um, and especially in the holiday and fall season, I love to cook. And over the last couple of years, I have noticed that I enjoy baking more than I have in the past. And so I went ahead and you know, the kids had some really good grades this time and they've been talking to me about wanting to make a cake. So, hi, Becky. Um, happy Monday. Hey, one of my faithful members. Um, yes, and so we had a really exciting time making a cake. So, for just a moment, if you've made a cake before, I want you to just take a moment, take this little ride with me. I'm going to engage in a little bit of um, story and, and imagery so that you can kind of paint this lovely picture of yourself making a cake. Now, if you've never done it, this will be even more, <laughs> even more fun. But um, we made a cake from scratch. So I just want to take you on this journey with me. So... Go ahead and close your eyes and I just want you to picture yourself in the kitchen. Picture yourself in the kitchen. You're gathering all your materials, right? And we're going to make a cake. So just think about it. What does the room smell like? What does the room kitchen feel like? Um, what are you wearing, right? Really get into it. And so just explore, like, have you ever really baked a cake from scratch? Now, I mean really from scratch. No box cake masterpieces, but a down-home, flour-dusting, sugary and buttery goodness type of cake. The one that smells delicious that's coming out of the oven and slides so efficiently and cleanly out of the pan. Have you carefully and delicately layered the cakes on top of one another, making sure that one layer isn't too far from the center and everything is lined up just right? But let's keep it real. You can open your eyes. Let's keep it real. Now, y'all know good and well that it doesn't always happen like that, right? That sometimes... Or the first time, maybe, that you tried to make a fresh from scratch cake, the cake you had or the batter you had was overmixed. It wasn't light and fluffy. And the cake refused to release from your almost doesn't count greased pan. You know, like you missed that little section, that little, that little corner section or whatever. Or you didn't quite do it right at the bottom or... You know, it just kind of started getting stuck, right? And your whole vision of a layered masterpiece has areas that are uneven and bumpy. Now, my grandmother used to make cakes all the time. And when she was in the kitchen, listen, you better not, you bet not, not better not, bet not come in the kitchen talking loud, stomping, making noise, 
playing huh you can't do none of that you hear me so the, otherwise the cake would do what fall now i don't i still don't understand this theory but listen that's how i grew up my grandmother could throw down and you better not mess up her cakes okay and my grandma was like a show enough could have been a a bona fide had her own bakery type of grandma okay so her whole vision, you know, just imagine that that all that stuff that you thought you were going to do with this beautiful cake kind of messed up, right? Like you didn't cook it all the way through when you tried to flip it over, you know, you weren't patient. So it didn't cool enough and it's stuck in. It's a mess, right? You skipped a couple steps. You rushed the process. So, <laughs> right. So... You didn't let the cake cool thoroughly, okay? Because sometimes we can be a little impatient. I know one of my kids is like, you sure we can't just go ahead and 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 put the icing on the cake now? You know, the cake's still hot, but can we just go on, put the icing on it? Like, just go ahead so we can get this thing together. So not only have you skipped a few steps, but you also rushed what the process right so we're trying to hurry up and get that thing on the plate and make sure it looks pretty but we're rushing the process so what happens when you go to put the icing on the cake and it's hot what happens the icing starts to melt right it starts to drip that top layer might even start sliding a little bit kind of doing a little ooze right so we need to make sure that the cake is cool before we start to ice the cake, right? Now, listen, we're talking about cake. We're talking about baking. We're talking about running in there and making all this kind of noise. We don't want the cake to fall. But in baking, you have to be precise. There has to be precision and there has to be calculated things, right? We have to make our measurements count. Um, we need to make sure that whatever we're doing, we have to be patient, let the cake cool. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that I am likely to rush a process, okay? I, have you rushed a process in life? Listen, I know what it's like to rush a process. In relationships, I could not wait to get engaged, okay? I, I was so impatient. I, could, I couldn't even wait. I was like, hmm, I just want to be married. I know this is the one. I'm ready to do it. Why we got to wait all this time? I've rushed in my career, okay? I've wanted things. I've wanted promotions. I've wanted to um, do all kinds of things. Hey, Tiffany, thank you. I wanted to rush the process, right? And so what about your personal growth? How many times have you tried to hurry up your personal growth? Hurry up that um, the, those feelings, hurry up the grieving process, hurry up, you know, pain. We want to hurry up and get through it. We got to rush the process, right? So, hey, Michelle. So we're trying to hurry up right? And get on out of this thing. We're trying to get out of this season that we're sitting in because we don't want to be here. It's uncomfortable. We want to get to the end result as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, but instead we've turned the cake over and it's crumbling, right? And we can't ice the cake because the cake is too hot. It's not ready yet. So, um, it, listen, it's easy to fall into this trap. It's easy. I do it all the time. I'm always in a rush. Go from one thing to the next. Go from one task to the next. Very task-driven, very goal-oriented. But guess what? We can't rush the process in anything. We can't even rush the process with baking, something that we should be able to have control over, right? And so it's difficult waiting for the cake to cool. It's difficult to wait and get through this season. So you wanted to put the icing on a warm cake and you only found it oozing and melting all over the sides. It's a mess, right? So I want you 
to see yourself. What situation have you rushed the process with? What situation have you tried to skip over instead of going through? Right? So how about this? So for me, I'll go first. I'll go first. I've tried to rush, rush my grieving process or my um, divorce recovery process, I should say. I tried to rush that. I was like, you know what? I'm good. If I if I didn't have to process the emotions of my kids, I would be even better. But guess what? That's all a part of the process. It's all a part of the process. We got to go through every single piece of it and process through it in order to get over it, right? And so it took me a minute to step back and be in the stillness and be in the moment and for me to get through those humps. And sometimes I feel like God has put me on this fast track to growth. And I look around and I'm like, God, another thing, yet another thing, like, okay, so now I got to deal with this career transition. Now I'm dealing with family transition. Now I'm dealing with um, parents and, and the fact that I'm in the sandwich generation. There's so many things that I would much rather just skip over than get so I can get to the end result, not realizing that as I skip through these things, I'm actually costing myself the, the final product and it's not going to be worth it. It's not going to be worth it. So I want to help you embrace every single process in your life. Whatever it is that you're thinking about right now that is like that cake in your life, I want you to embrace that process. I want you to embrace the silence. Embrace the stillness that is required. Right? Embrace the patience that's required to see things from a fresh perspective. Sometimes it takes us removing ourselves from the situation mentally to have a new and a fresh perspective on it. Sometimes it takes us not having our hand all over it for us to see it from a different vantage point. So, um, so engage in the self-talk. Engage in the self-love. Engage in whatever it is that's going to help you to feel a little bit more fulfilled, a little bit more ready for that battle before you put the icing on that cake and set it out for the display. So if you know everything, presentation is everything, right? And so if we go ahead and rush that process, we knock the cake out, it's it's looking crazy, it's a mess, it's a crumbled mess, we're trying to patch it together. Now, I don't know if y'all have ever seen that show, Nailed It, but the kids and I like to watch that show. It's quite hilarious. It's on Netflix, Nailed It. And it's a bunch of bakers or people who want to be bakers, right? And they're trying to figure out how to make these fancy desserts, right? And... They mess it up real bad. It looks like it was mush. It, the color palette is wrong on the dessert. Like all kinds of stuff. Most of the time, it turns out to something you don't even want to eat, right? The judges are struggling with trying to eat it. What is it in your life that's turning out to be a nailed it masterpiece? Something that looks horrible, because you were trying to rush the process. You didn't look up the ingredients. You didn't take your time. You didn't make sure that you followed the directions carefully. What is it in your life that is turning out to be a nailed it mess? So when you're in these moments, even in the seasons of quiet, some of you are in a place we talked about build with boldness. We talked about building a business. We had people on the lives that were helping us to learn and to grow. And some of you have things that you're passionate about that you know will become a business eventually or is already a business, but you feel like you need to take a little bit of a hiatus. There is nothing wrong with that. The seasons of stillness and quiet are required. Don't diminish those things but make sure that you're going through them intentionally. So embrace the process. And even in that season where you're trying to grow, even in that season where people can't see the outward result or that display, they can't see the cake in the cake pan, that doesn't mean that you're not worth the process, that you're not worthy of the calling. You're not worthy of the purpose that was placed inside of you. So don't diminish these seasons. 
embrace the process and expect a great outcome. Okay, so I'm just going to give you three things. I'm just going to give you three things, three quick points, and we're going to dive into them very carefully. And then that's it. It's simple. So the three things are to read, to rehearse, and to release. I'm going to say them again. Read, rehearse, and release. All right. So when it comes to reading, some of you are like, oh my gosh, I don't want to read another book. When I finish school, I close that chapter. Well, you still need to dive into some things that are going to help you become a better person, whatever that thing is, whatever you're filling yourself with is what's going to come out. So you need to fill your mind with positive things or helpful things on a daily basis. So what are you reading? What are you digesting? Um, are you taking picking up books that are helping you become a better you? Are you reading trash novels just for fun? For a mental break? <laughs> are you looking at magazines with a bunch of gossip? Are you looking at feeds on the social media for laughs? Or are you doing things that are pouring more into you? Doing devotionals, doing gratitude journals. I know that um, one of the members of the group shared a gratitude journal that was amazing. I think it's these are the things that are required for us to become um, better women, for us to become better people, and for us to pour out better things in our environments, right? And so how do we begin to refocus and get that bird's eye view on our situations? How do we do that? Um, and feed yourself with positivity and insight. So it doesn't all have to be flowers and roses. Sometimes we just need to get some um, down home truth from somebody. What is it that we're digesting on a daily basis? What are you feeding your spirit? What are you feeding your heart? So we need to guard our hearts as well. Um, the second thing, so we did read, the second thing is rehearse. So um, rehearse is simply to go it, go over it over and over again, right? So when I'm trying to figure out how to make this cake, I may have to do the cake a couple times until I get my special sauce, you know? Until I get my special um, creation or my special spin on the take of the recipe. And so in, in life, we still need to implement steps that you've already learned. You already have everything inside of you. It's just whether or not you're choosing to access it. It's whether or not you're choosing to access that training that you paid thousands of dollars for. It's whether or not you're willing to access your history and your and your experience so that you can become or um or or utilize it so that you can become what you're called to become. Are you affirming yourself daily? We talked about that at the very beginning of this group. For those of you who have been with me since the beginning, that was one of the first lives that I ever did was talking about how you're speaking life into yourself. Do you affirm yourself daily? Do you tell yourself that you're worth it? Do you tell yourself that you can accomplish all of these things? Are you making sure that you are engaging in positive self-talk? Um, and then how about feeds, right? Um, how, how are you being consistent in your practices? If you say you're going to exercise, right? And that's going to be what's going to fill you up and what's going to rejuvenate you and what's going to help you feel better about yourself. Have you done it? When it started getting cold outside, now I'm speaking to myself, okay? When it started getting cold outside, did you take your exercise inside or did you just stop? Now I'm speaking to myself so I can say ouch to Tiffany, yes indeed. So Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I remaining consistent in the things that I say that I'm going to do? Because guess what? I'm going to keep it transparent with you guys. On Monday nights, sometimes I question, and usually it's on the weekend. I'm like, should I still do these lives? Do I still need to do this? And then the next thought that I replace it with is that I made a promise to these ladies that I would be here and I would show up every Monday at 8. I don't care what's going on. I'm here Monday at 8. I don't care if I leave work and I'm exhausted. I'm here Monday at 8 
because I told myself that I would remain consistent and that I would consistently pour into each and every one of you. I made that commitment to myself and to my group. So, um, and then are we praying? Are we meditating regularly? Are we making sure that we um, access the powers that are within us? Um, you know, and making sure that we are accessing all of the things that are available to us. Um, and yes, I've done that too, Tiffany. She says she paid for an expensive class and hasn't been um, in the lessons in months. How about I've committed to paying for different courses and stuff like that. And <laughs> these virtual classes, you have to be accountable now. You are required to be accountable for the things that you say you're going to do, right? And so you can say, hey, I'm a, you know what? I'm going to pour into this training. I'm going to do this training. And I'm just going to watch the replay. I don't need to show up. I'll just, I'll, I'll log on later and I'll watch the replay. And what happens? And I'm guilty of it too. I may or may not get back to that replay. Sometimes, whether I've spent my money or not, or I may, I may get to the replay, but then I'm like halfway focused, you know what I'm saying? When I really should have just forced myself to show up in the first place. So, so this is, I know this is a little bit of ouch. It's an ouch and an amen from me too. So, um, yeah, I'm just giving y'all what I, what got downloaded to me today. So, <laughs> um, I had a whole different topic and it just re rerouted. So, um, and then the last one. So we talked about reading. What are you pouring? Um, what are you uh, reading? What are you filling your mind with on a daily basis? The second one was rehearse. What are you um, repeating? How are you being consistent when you show up? And the third one is release. So the first thing I think of with release is that I'm giving up control. Um, that's been one of the struggles in my life. I like to orchestrate every little thing. I like to figure out the pitfalls. I like to figure out how to avoid them. I like to figure out what is it that I need to do in order to navigate this obstacle. And the obstacle didn't even show up yet. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm in control of the situation and I have A, B, and C outs just in case A doesn't go right. I have B and C and I might even have D figured out and I'm thinking of all the negative aspects so that I can control every aspect of the situation. I'm over here trying to be a puppet master. And what happens in life? We can't be a puppet master all the time, right? Because when we don't allow ourselves to move freely and fluidly, and we don't really feel like there is something else beyond us that's in control. When we feel like we need to control every little aspect of our life, what happens? Often, often, and I'll speak for myself, it doesn't work out. Or I have sabotaged the situation so much that I have manifested that very negative thing that I thought would happen. So when I'm speaking of release, like the cake, we don't want to rush and control every part of the process. Sometimes we just need to let it go. Sometimes we need to stop mixing the cake batter. Stop rehearsing all that negative stuff. Sometimes we need to let it cool off and see it from a different vantage point, right? Sometimes we need to release our timelines and our deadlines and our expectations that can't even really be met. Sometimes we don't need to rush towards that display case. We need to just wait until we are ready to be put on display. And we don't know when that situation is coming and we don't know how it's coming. Some people in this group have been, you know, working on businesses and opportunities for a long period of time and <laughs> it took one interaction for them to have thousands of dollars of profit one interaction one moment in time for them to get what they needed to be put on display when they were ready though so you have to be diligent in the little things 
Because when your time comes for your display, you need to be ready. And your ingredients have to be cooked all the way. Or when you go to be on the display, if you're not all the way done inside, if you're not all the way whole, guess what? It's going to be a hot mess. So in an effort to avoid that, I want you to check and think about what's baking in your oven. So don't forget, read, rehearse, and release. Relinquish control over everything.